Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the future of our own galaxy, yet at the same time talk about a neighbor very close to our own galaxy that represents what will actually become of the Milky Way in about 4.5 billion years. Welcome to What The Math. If you've watched a lot of videos on this channel, by now you should know that in about four and a half billion years, Andromeda and Milky Way will actually combine into one super galaxy. This is something that we expect will happen due to the fact that we, we can see Andromeda galaxy speeding toward us at a relatively fast velocity of several hundred kilometers per second and basically accelerating toward us as well. Now, what exactly will happen when this occurs? One of the things is that our galaxy our new galaxy, our new mega galaxy, I guess we can refer to it as Milk Dromeda, uh, will actually undergo a very dramatic change and will turn into a radio galaxy. What is a radio galaxy, you may ask? Well, it's actually something that you've also heard before in this channel um, when we talked about some of the brightest sources far, far, far away from our planet Earth. Those sources I've often referred to as quasars or blazars, and those are basically radio galaxies. Now, a radio galaxy would look something like this. So you have the actual galaxy in the middle, you have the central black hole somewhere in there, planets and stars around it, and then you have these really, really large jets coming off two sides. These are formed because uh, due to the sudden increase of various gases and materials that both galaxies received while they were combining, the central black hole in the middle suddenly gets to gorge and eat all of this extra dust and stuff and even things like stars and planets that are suddenly circulating around it. In other words, right here in the middle of all of this is a huge sort of like a buffet party. The central black hole is just eating all of this up and spewing out a lot of energy by creating these two jets that unfortunately we don't see in the universe sandbox. Now here is the thing though. We normally think that these galaxies are kind of far away, but they do create this very bright light because of these two jets that we can see even from as far as 14 uh, billion light years away. Uh, but it just turns out that there's actually a neighbor that we have, well, relative neighbor, uh, that is a radio galaxy and is creating this huge relativistic jet that some other galaxies uh, are observing if they're actually in the pathway of this jet. This particular galaxy is known as Centaurus A, and you can actually find it in Space Engine and pretty much in every space simulation, and it's one of the most famous uh, galaxies when it comes to astronomy because it's very, very easy to find it with a, a relatively um, average telescope. If we were to try to find it in Space Engine, well, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, we're going to type Centaurus and it's going to come up right away. Uh, the actual galaxy in this particular simulation doesn't really look as dramatic as, as the picture you just saw. As a matter of fact, it uh, looks a little bit underwhelming and that's because in, in terms of visual uh, representation and in terms of the actual light coming off it, it really doesn't look that spectacular, even if you make it a little bit brighter. But that's because it's an actual radio galaxy. Most of its light and most of its uh, brightness comes from other frequencies, from radio frequencies and also from higher frequencies like X-rays and gamma rays. As a matter of fact, if you were to actually look at some of the other simulations where the galaxy is seen, um, it, it just sort of is in this invisible area that is all radio waves. If you find a way to actually detect them with some sort of a radio uh, receiver, you would actually be surprised how large this area is. Um, this galaxy is emitting such a huge amount of radio waves that it covers about eight degrees of our uh, night sky. Now, um, unfortunately, obviously for most people, they won't be able to see it. You would need to have a relatively interesting way of detecting this using a radio telescope, uh, but, Nevertheless, this is kind of what the scientists have been really wondering about for a long time until they realized what was happening here. So this is the actual photo, an actual image of the galaxy that you can uh, find on different astronomical websites. And uh, the actual galaxy itself is not that impressive, not that big. But nevertheless, it is very, very powerful. And we think that it's actually 
creating all of these radio waves and all of these frequencies, mostly because of the collision with another galaxy about 100 million uh, years ago. It most likely was a smaller uh, galaxy, possibly somewhat similar to our Milky Way, colliding with a much larger elliptical galaxy. And here you can actually see various uh, ultraviolet images of various blue stars that were born from this collision when all of this dust uh, came together and created new stars. So in, in essence, this is also what's known as a starburst galaxy, where a lot of new stars are born and created because of this um, event of uh, collision with another galaxy. This is what the relativistic jet kind of looks like if you were to look at it from, uh, from our planet Earth and if you were to be able to detect it because it, it is actually being emitted in um, very, very high energy frequencies like gamma rays and x-rays. Uh, but it's quite symmetrical and it's basically sending off these very bright jets into these two directions. So if far, far away, uh, somewhere over here, there is actually another world, they'll be able to see this as a quasar from their perspective. What makes this galaxy a little bit more unusual, though, are these so-called dust lanes, which were kind of hard to explain until we realized that this was definitely a galaxy born from a collision of two different galaxies. Uh, but until we figured this out, it was actually quite a unknown to scientists what exactly was happening here. And once again, there is a very, very active galactic core in the middle that is producing tremendous amount of energy. And by the way, the actual black hole in the middle is uh, something like 10 times more massive than the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. So it's a very, very powerful uh, radio galaxy. And if you look at this galaxy in infrared, you can actually start seeing the actual dust lane a little bit better. This is actually what the shape of uh, the galaxy looks like from other angles. And so we can kind of even see this in Space Engine if we were to... Uh, zoom into it. Let's actually go there a little bit closer to it right now just to see what it looks like uh, in Space Engine. So this is kind of what the shape of it is. Now um, this is at a distance of about um, 10 to maybe 16 million light years away from us. So it is kind of far away but we know so little about this galaxy that we don't even know exactly how far away it is. 10 to 16 million light years is a huge discrepancy. And that's basically how difficult it is for us to actually see uh, or try to detect the distance to it. Even though we've seen at least two supernova, which should have been enough for us to determine the distance, we don't still really know how far away it is. And right there in the middle is the radio galactic um, nuclei that you can kind of see being very, very bright right in the center. You can actually, in space center at least, you can actually go in the middle and even find the central black hole, which is very, 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 very massive. Although the easiest way to find the central black hole is to actually just look up the black hole right here. So we can kind of zoom into it and it will be right in the middle of that globular cluster. Uh, so the interesting part about all of this is that one day we think this is kind of what's going to happen to the Milky Way. It's going to become a very, very bright, extremely bright radio galaxy that is going to produce so much more energy than Centaurus A that it's probably going to be visible from as far away as, well, technically the end of visible universe, although, of course, in about 13 to 14 billion years. Because that's how long it would take for light to travel that far and to basically reach those distances. Uh, now, what is really interesting about uh, Centaurus A is that, well, unlike other quasars, it's actually so close to us that we can actually study it in a lot of detail and we'll, we're, we can kind of use it as a model to try to establish uh, what actually happens to these galaxies, these radio galaxies, and what makes them so different from a typical galaxy. And actually, what's more important is that how this influences the evolution of um, various stars and planets in this region, and if this is somehow is the reason why certain regions of galaxies have um, elements that are not present in other regions. In other words, why is it that our, our planet Earth has found itself in a location where it could get all of these materials that are actually not really easily available in other parts of the galaxy. So all of this is kind of important for us to study so we can start discovering new worlds that are habitable to human species. 
But other than that, that's actually all I wanted to say in this video. And I wanted to show you the Centaurus A um, Galaxy while also talking about the future of our own Andromeda and Milky Way when they collide and become the Andromeda Galaxy. Until then though, we're going to stop this here and tomorrow you're going to learn something else about galaxies you may have not known, so do come back and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and space out. And as always, bye bye.